Okay, so let's take a look at sort of a nice lesson to try uh, that involves coordinating, no, not coordinating, converting between coordinate systems. Okay, and some cool things you can do with them. Okay. So, for those of you who are following along in class, you may remember that we had our little Lego tree crook guy, uh, our protagonist, antagonist, sorry, our antagonist, uh, moving left and right across the top of the screen. And to figure out the boundaries uh, of the um, of the screen there, we had just sort of moved him around and came up with you know, a reasonable number. So let's see, uh, he's currently at 5.78, and then in our text, or in our script rather, uh, we decided to use, what did we decide to use? Seven, All right? So we just kind of picked that number out of our hat and we kind of moved it around and saw some things and tried that. And uh, that was good enough. Now, I'm not a big fan of magic numbers like that. I like to have some, reasoning behind those numbers. So ideally what we really want is we want the uh, our antagonist to go towards the edge of the screen. Right? That's what he's doing. He's moving towards the edge of the screen there. Um, and we don't really know what that is, but uh, it's quite often useful to know what the edge of the screen is. And thankfully, Unity has these handy things built in that we can refer to screen dot width, for example. And that will give us the current width of the of the screen window in pixels. Okay. Which is good. That's what we want to we want to use. We want to use this screen width, but it's in pixels. It's not in world coordinates. So, we have to somehow convert from screen coordinates, these pixels, these screen coordinates, we want to convert them to some number we can use in the world. All right. Now, to do that, normally what we want to do is we want to convert it through the camera. The camera is the conversion, right? The camera is seeing the world, converting it to something you see on the screen, right? The camera sees in the world, converts it to the screen. So it kind of makes sense to think of the camera as being the point at which we're kind of transforming things that are in the world to the screen and vice versa, potentially screen over to the world. So we have these coordinate systems and normally, you know, like I said, the screen pixels go from like 0, 0 to 19, 20, 10, 80 or whatever it is based on your screen. But it's also going to be, blah, 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 blah. it's going also going to, um, it's going to, be, boy, I'm just drawing a blank. It, it, it's going to be uh, uh, beholden on the size of the screen and then converted to the world. So I, I it's gonna depend. That was the word. Wow, that just got totally stuck in my, in uh, the tip of my tongue there. So, so we have this screen width and we know we're going to want to convert it through the camera, right? Whoops, sorry. Camera. So the camera and which camera? We want to use the main camera. All right. Now there's a bunch of different functions built in. And in this case, we want to say screen point to, not viewport point, to world point. Right? These are some of the conversions we could do. World to screen point, viewport to screen point, screen to, but we're doing from, from the screen to the world. Okay. All right. You'll notice it wants a vector three to convert because it depends. It depends where in the world this point is. So in order to do that, we have to say new, and we need to pass it at least a vector two. And just for the sake of completeness, even though we're not going to use it just yet, maybe we'll use it somewhere later, we will use screen dot height. Oops. All right, screen height. So now we have camera main, camera dot main dot screen to world point, new vector two, screen to, and there. That's going to give us a fully fledged, and we could say print. We'll print that out so we can see what that looks like. All right? So let's save, go over here, and we'll hit play in the game. And don't worry about that. Oh, first thing we get, 
8.95 and 8.9 comma 5 negative 10 so the camera is at negative 10 uh, you'll notice right it's not at 0 if we come over to camera boom okay we see that it's at negative 10 so that's where it inherited that negative 10 there this is going to come in useful for other things as well as we move our mouse around we're going to use this so this is a little hint a little precursor to using the mouse to manipulate the screen as well but okay so we get 8.9 as the width 5 as the height all right or at least uh, so let's see that would be here so in the world this point over here would be 8.9 and 5 all right so we want to do something with that right we'll do something important with that so for starters let's do this we had this number which was left and right oops so we have this left and right edge so instead of just randomly set it to get seven let's set it to this dot x all right so now if we come back and we press play you will see our uh our antagonist now hits the edges of the screen and moves back in except except here's the problem uh, he's moving halfway across the boundary now why is that well that's because if we look at it, if we select him Lego tree you'll see that his origin is right at the center there okay so what do we do how do we move that now I suppose there might be some ways to you know say oh we'll make a child object and put the sprite on there and offset it and so on. don't want to deal with that don't want to deal with that we want to be a little bit more um, uh, also you know sophisticated so let's be a little bit more sophisticated here so we want to subtract something left and right edge minus equals something some characteristic of this object right something to do with its sprite obviously so let's start off saying get component and for the sake of argument we will use get component of children now this would work just in case we move the sprite down so it's not on the actual object but maybe it's on a child object of the thing that the tree is right and we're going to look for the sprite renderer okay so we're going to get a sprite renderer and one of the nice things we can get is the size of the sprite renderer right so we could use that we could say okay let's subtract off this size well this size whoops dot x <laughs> get some notifications on uh, something else there dot x all right so now if I hit play you'll see that it moves and it doesn't hit the edges but the problem is it doesn't get all the way to the edge because this is at the center because at the center I want to use I want to subtract off X divided by 2 all right and that's set. now we are gonna see it move all the way whoops still got some random motion oh no wait <laughs> I something really wrong there uh, wrong divided by there not half the screen I'm gonna subtract off half of that X half of the X that is the width of the sprite the size in X of the sprite so now the sprite is gonna be smart enough to go all the way to the edge boom and boom okay perfect right good enough now if we wanted to do an exercise uh, continue that's that forward is we can position it at the top of the screen offset by a certain amount so I'm gonna leave that as an exercise for you to say okay how would we extend this to say all right let's now also use potentially the screen height to set the location that the sprite starts at perhaps okay so quick lesson just to try that out and uh, try a new setup here thank you
have some fun with that.